going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is Maple and Honey. Alrighty, got another uh, good bottle of whiskey to share with you today. This one is called the Hancock Presidential Reserve uh, Whiskey Bourbon. It's made by the Buffalo Trace Distillery. So we'll give this one a shot and we'll try it out with some banana fritters. These are supposedly appetizers from Thailand or Bangkok, supposedly street food in Bangkok over there. So we'll try it out together with, uh, with the whiskey and, and see how it tastes. So, so here you go, whiskey first. So here's the bottle. This one's called a Hancock Presidential Reserve Single Barrel Bourbon Whiskey. So again, these are made by the Buffalo Trace Distillery. They're relatively rare. Um, they're not as rare as some of the other more sought after bottles, but this one is relatively rare too. Um, I don't see them as much. Interesting thing about Hancock's Reserve is, well, let me pour a little bit first. This one is 88.9 proof. 44.4% alcohol volume. So it's relatively light. It's not too heavy. It's not a, you know, punching the face kind of ordeal when you drink this. It's funny because this one, a couple things about the Hancock Reserve. This one is, it's like, I mean, I think of it as like a bastard child or like um, ugly duckling of the Buffalo Trace lineup. I say that because this one, if you go on their website, you can't find it. It's not even listed on their website. You know, they got the, you know, E.H. Taylors and the Blantons and the E, you know, Elmer T. Lees and all that stuff. All the ones that everyone sort of knows about. This one, it's not listed. So it's kind of, kind of strange that they don't even list this, this bottle of whiskey. And two, I mean, look at the bottle. It's very vanilla. You know, they have, you know, it's just a regular round bottle. Um, nothing crazy about the cork top either and just the two stickers on the front and back and no, no colors no design It's I mean even the sticker. I don't know if you can see it It's all put on a little bit crooked. There's a little bit of air between the sticker and the bottle So it's a little bit strange um, If you compare it with some of the other more nicer bottles like the Blanton's or Elmer T. Lee's or the Rock Hill Farm, right? So from that perspective you know, it's a little different, right? And two, again, it's made by Buffalo Trace and it's made with same ingredients as Blanton's, Elmer T. Lee. What's the other one? The Rock Hill Farms. The, you know, Buffalo Trace mashed bill number two, which is, you know, mainly corn, a little bit high on the rye and, and barley. So it's made by exactly same mash bill or same, you know, grain uh, ingredient and uh, composition. But it's not, it's not as sought after. It's not as highly regarded as those three bottles for a reason I don't know. And just the look of the bottle, it's just sort of done half, half ass job, right? The sticker's all peeling, um, you know, there's a bubble on there and it's just, it's just a plain bottle, so. But anyways, let's give it a, let's give it a little try and see if it tastes as good as Platins or LRT Lee. Here we go. On the nose. Caramel, definitely a lot of caramel. It's like it comes like a like a peppermint, like a minty note coming through. It's probably because of the, it's a, again I mentioned it's a high rye. It's not that high, but there's rye in there. Usually, a lot of the bourbons there's you know mostly corn and there's some some barley. Uh, sometimes there's a weed, but this one has rye in there and supposedly a little more than the other mash bills. So give it one more sniff. Yeah, just, just like a caramel and, and like a leafy, pepperminty scent. So, all right, let's give it a swig. Cheers, everyone. All right. All right, very easy drinking. That's for sure, right off the bat. There's not much heat that I sense when it hits the palate. And there's like a, I'm, I'm expecting the heat to sort of hit the palate, but it just like goes down, which isn't necessarily bad. I mean, not everyone's looking for that, you know, you know 120 proof in bourbons. Let's give it one more swig. Mm. 
vanilla, vanilla, but very thin. It's not like the thick vanilla. It's not like a vanilla extract or anything. It's just vanilla, very thin vanilla flavor, like a vanilla syrup, like water syrup that you put in your coffee or something like that. Um, and it's the flavor just is gone. It's gone right away. I have to, I have to drink it again. Not very nutty. Maybe some, maybe some nutmeg. My hair, uh, oak. I could taste the oak. I could taste the barrelly taste coming in. It's sort of bitter. It's not powerful bitterness, but it's bitter towards the end. But again, the whole experience goes away. It's, it's gone by now, as if I never drank anything. Let's try one more time. Try to get something else out of it. Yeah, vanilla. Not overly sweet, just just gentle sweet. Oh, right there. Maybe maybe like 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 a leatherish, like chewing leather kind of like leather jacket. I don't. Know, that doesn't sound very appetizing. But yeah, reminds me of leather. But again, gone. There's nothing there as if I never even drank this bourbon. So again, I mean, that's not to knock on this, this bottle already. It's just, it's just a light drinking, easy sipping whiskey finish. There's not much to say for finish. It's very light and, and everything is thin. And by the time it gets to back of your throat, it's completely gone. So experience is very uh, subdued. It sort of just says hi and it just walks out the door. It's not bad. Not bad, but it's a very short experience of the bourbon. A lot of times you drink bourbon, you know, there's a, you know, there's a whole experience in your mouth for, you know, maybe 10 seconds or whatnot. This one is, you know, if I say it, maybe it's like three, four, five seconds and, and that's it. So, all right, then let's try out the banana fritters. I've never tried these, so I don't know how they'll taste. I air fried them downstairs. Um, so they should be crispy, but we'll see. Uh, supposedly they're pretty popular street food in Thailand. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, but I could be wrong. But I got these. I just air fried them. And I, this is like a maple syrup, just in case it's sort of bland or not sweet. I just got it just in case. I just so, uh, on a whim, I prepared it. So right, let's try it. Here we go. It's good, it's decent. It is a little bland though. The banana, hold on, one more bite. I don't know if it's because it's already cooked or fried, but the banana flavor is like half there and half not. It's like I'm just chewing on something like gooey, like a banana texture, but like the flavor is like half the banana. But the outer texture is pretty good. It's pretty crispy. Let's try with a little bit of maple syrup. My impromptu concoction. All right. Not much better. Oh, good. I'm gonna try with the maple syrup again. What? Let's try with the whiskey now. without the syrup. Mm. Mm. Like a banana liquor. Rush of banana taste once once the once the whiskey mixes with the banana. Let's try it one more time with the syrup. Mm. 
It's good. I'm not gonna lie, it's good. I swear, whatever fry food it is, it tastes, it goes so well with the whiskey. You guys should try it. Fries, onion rings, banana fritters, anything fried. You drink it with the whiskey. It, it's like a hand in hand, like a match made in heaven combination. It's, it's really good. The crispiness is on point. The banana, I told you, it sort of has lost its flavor when you just eat it by itself. But but then once it mixes with the with the with the whiskey, it sort of like you know opens up the the hidden banana flavor if you if I may say that, and it just you know engulfs the your palate along with the whiskey. It, it travels down with the whiskey, so it's pretty good. There you have it, guys. Uh, what's my verdict on this one? Well, this one's interesting, right? This sort of split. Yeah, I, I don't think if I'm thinking about it. I, Again, this bottle is like I can buy it for like 60 or 70 dollars. I think if you never tried it and you want to try this Hancock's Reserve Buffalo Trace product, 60, 70 dollars, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, if you got money to burn, why not give it a shot? Try it out. If you like it, then you like it. Uh, but I've seen these go for, you know, 200 dollars, 300 dollars on the internet. Ooh, that's, there's so much that you could get for that money that's, clearly better than this. I mean, even at like 50, 60, 70 dollars level, you could get something that's, that offers more flavor, wider experience. This one, I feel like it's like a, like a caramel, a little bit of oakiness, and done. It's like a one or two noter. Smells okay, tastes good, uh, but it's just one straightforward flavor of caramel and a little bit of oak. And the finish is very light. I mean, that, that's the, I think that's the, the least thing I enjoy about this. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get more flavors out of it. I'm trying to get more finish out of it. And it just isn't there. It just goes away too. It just runs away out of your mouth. It's in a hurry to get out of your mouth. And I, I don't like that, um, to be frank. You know, I have to keep drinking, as you saw before. I have to keep drinking it to sort of get more out of it, more out of it. Maybe some of you are more well-versed uh, than I. But for me, I have to keep drinking it to so get more, a little bit, trying to squeeze more out of the, out of the experience, and that's something that maybe um, is lacking for this Hancock Reserve. But again, if you're comparing it with the Blantons, the the Elmer Keeleys of of the world, the Rock Hill Farms, maybe you'll be disappointed. But you know, I think uh, honestly, if I take a step back, it, it's worth the fifty bucks or sixty bucks. I mean, these days bourbon prices are crazy anyway, so. Um, you know, if you are able to sort of uh, get your hand on this, um, then I think it's worth the 50 60 dollars. And um, especially for those who are just starting on your bourbon journey or bourbon or whiskey, you know, experience, you want to sort of ease into it. This one's uh, definitely a good one. It's it's only 88 proof, right? So it's very easy. Uh, it won't, you know, if you're not used to higher proofs, this one is, is right on the money. And uh, it's only 50, 60, 70 dollars. So you could sort of get that if you could find one. You know, it, it's a good bourbon. No, no matter what others are saying, I think it's a decent bourbon. Not a great one by any, any stretch, but it's a decent bourbon. It's the main thing about bourbon, which is sweet and a little bit of oak. Banana fritters, it's pretty good. I had no expectations on this one. I've heard it was decent by some people. I thought I'd give it a try. I thought the, uh, you know, I was trying to make a video for this one. I was like, what, what can I do? And I was like, hey, you know, Hancock Reserve with the Bangkok hors d'oeuvre. I thought that, that might be a good uh, catchphrase. So, you know, just uh, flame on me on the comments below. Um, but, but anyways, I thought it was pretty good. The addition of the maple syrup, I thought, was, I thought that was a great idea. And it turned out to be a great idea. So, alrighty, well, there you have it, guys. Thanks for joining me, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, and uh, if you get a chance, hit the hit subscribe button, hit the like button. Comment below, let me know what you think. If you like the Sankong Reserve, if you're looking for one, can't find it, or if you think it's not as good as I think it was, um, let me know at the bottom, and uh, I'll take a look and res respond as well. So, thanks again everyone, appreciate it. Have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.